Put on your dancing shoes, kids, and let's strut under the mirror ball of history. Let's tune our radio to the good, good times and remember what it was to be young and free as we visit the week ending 31st October 1977. Number 10 is the debut single for Blondie, In the Flesh, which initially charted only here in Australia, courtesy of exposure on the ABC's Countdown show. More on these scalawags later. In the Flesh rose to number two and began a long and happy association between the Australian charts and a band we never really knew what they were going to give us in order to make those charts. Number nine is a bit of the old proggy prog rock with one of the most unlikely hits ever, Emerson, Lake and Palmer's Fanfare for the Common Man, which fell this week from its peak of number five. Also famed for its memorable video filmed knee deep in the snow at the Montreal Olympic Stadium, which showed three blokes freezing near to death and looking about as miserable as any three musicians ever have. At number eight, we have the last single released by Elvis Presley in his lifetime, Way Down, which was currently on the last legs of its pity lap in the wake of the passing of the king. Now, Way Down is no great shakes as a record, but it's far from the worst thing he ever did, and it's far from the worst thing in the top ten this week. Way Down entered the charts the week after Elvis died. It was probably scheduled for the release that date anyway, as Moody Blue finally left the charts the week before. And it's nice that, with Moody Blue and Way Down, the king of rock and roll's last two hits in his lifetime were actually rockers. At sexy number seven, one of, if not the, Last Bob Dylan written songs to make the top 10 was Graham Bonnet's It's All Over Now Baby Blue. Was to be the last, it's a strong note to go out on. Bonnet is a great singer who should have had more than just his two top 40 hits. Number 6 is future Bond songstress Rita Coolidge with her bland and inoffensive take on excitement machine Jackie Wilson's Your Love Has Lifted Me. While she's no Jackie Wilson, she puts in a good effort on the back of a good arrangement which flirts with but ultimately rejects the trappings of disco. It's as enjoyable an artifact of the times and even if it only gets one person curious enough to check out Jackie Wilson's original and the wonder in general that was Jackie Wilson, it's served an even greater purpose. Come wander a while in the fruitful grove of facts. Come gaze on the tall timber of ancient factoidal forests in Fowl's fantastic world of facts. The steepest climber this week was the Star Wars Cantina theme by Miko, up 19 places to 22. While it was What I Did For Love by Amorozzi disco diva Marsha Hines that took the biggest tumble, falling 19 places to 29. The highest debutante was You're In My Heart by Rod Stewart, and this was also, interestingly, the next number one single. So complete was the current incumbent's stranglehold on the top spot. And the longest running hit on the charts was Tina Charles's Dr. Love, which just sort of plodded about for better than six months before finally dropping out of the top 40 by the week before Christmas. Top of the charts in the USA was the seemingly untoppable You Light Up My Life by Debbie Boone, which spent a titanic 10 weeks aloft, second then only to Elvis's Don't Be Cruel for number one longevity. In the UK, ABBA rules the charts with one of their superior singles, The Name of the Game, which spent four weeks on top before being tumbled down by the truly toxic Mull of Kintyre. Here in Australia, Rumours by Fleetwood Mac was the number one album for the last of its eight weeks on top, before Rod Stewart did for it with Footloose and Fancy Free. But the album of the year wasn't Rumours or Hotel California or even ELO's massive selling a new world record, which dominated the late summer and autumn but Boz Skaggs's mighty Silk Degrees, which spent a well-deserved 18 consecutive weeks at number one through the mid-year. Let's rejoin the countdown, which by dint of the incredible counting down skills I've honed over 25 episodes of this show, I calculate we rejoin at number five. And it is number five. Number five is everybody's favourite lip-syncing German disco confection, Boney M, with the largely forgettable and largely forgotten Mar Baker, which was their second top 40 hit in this country. Stalled this week at number five, it was as good as it got for this record, and it began a crawl down the charts where it ran out of fizz in mid-December. 
At number four this week, it's celebrated songwriter Carol Bayer Sager with You're Moving Out Today, a version of the song which in the hands of co-author Bette Midler failed to get out of the 90s during its top 100 run. Jaunty, inconsequential and a favourite at rock and roll trivia nights and having spent most of September at number one, it's the perfect example of the disposable artefact that defined the times and no further. In at number three was the biggest selling Australian record of the year in what was all in all a pretty disappointing year for Australian acts on the charts, the ferrets with Don't Fall In Love. Conceived as an experiment by Countdown, that legendary pop music show on the ABC, to see if they could wholly manufacture a number one through their own resources and marketing, the back streets of Melbourne provided the not disco, not rock, but kind of post-punk poppy sounds of the ferrets, along with the not too hideously ugly lead singer to appeal to Countdown's core audience of barely pubescent girls. Countdown's host and a great record producer in his own right, Ian Meldrum, was installed in the producer's chair and he came up with a sharp and not uninteresting song. But did it make number one? Alas, no, it peaked at number two at the end of September and then yo-yoed between three and four for a month or so more. They did have a minor hit with the follow-up single, which I don't recall in the slightest, but once Countdown's sponsorship ended, the Ferris pretty much free fell into oblivion. This week's number two was I Feel Love by the late, great Donna Summer, who'd spent a solitary week atop the charts a few weeks back. More hypnotic German robo-disco, but distinctly different from Boney M's Kitty Dance Records, this one owes more to the kraut rock stylings of Neuer or Kraftwerk, both for its driving motoric beat and the relentless futuristic vision. The second of 13 top 40 hits for her here on our local charts, in her home country, Summer was also the first artist ever to have three consecutive double albums top the Billboard album charts. There's a bit of trivia that'll win you money in a pub. Well, Gene didn't come groveling back like we thought he would, so we went right to the very best as his replacement. So henceforth, our number one hit of the week will be drummed in by none other than Monty the Safety Monkey. Go you funky monkey, go! Number one this week and for the next six weeks is the forgotten BG Andy Gibb with I Just Want to Be Your Everything. An absolute slice of summery pop joy from a 19 year old who truly had it all. Even by the incredible standards which his brothers were about to set with Saturday Night Fever, Andy could hold his own as a singer, a performer and a teeny pop magazine idol. Andy only managed four top 40 hits on my local charts, but had eight in the US with three number ones. His lifetime was all too tragically short. He died in 1988, five days after his 30th birthday. But every time you hear him, you're reminded of just how much he could have contributed. And thus ends our sometimes triumphant, sometimes melancholy look back at a time and a place where the old popular culture died in the crepuscular dimness of a Graceland Gotter Damarung, and within three months, the seeds of contemporary popular culture burst forth with the release of Star Wars. And that's what happened then, in the past, and there in that foreign country. And while the future is equally remote and much less certain, I hope we'll meet again in it for another view of the world, one small town top 40 at a time.